Another week of tier list where I rate the most recent episodes that I've seen and rate it depending on how much I enjoyed it. Not an objectively good tier list, nothing like that. It's just how much I enjoyed it from peak, great, good, mid to dookie. First up, Demon Slayer. What'd you guys think about Demon Slayer? I thought that Demon Slayer, most recent episode, I'd be happy to put it in great. I don't think it was quite peak. I don't think compared to some of the other episodes that it's the best compared to it but it was definitely way way better than before the other episodes before this was like what the fuck are we doing so much filler so much anime only content stretched out throwing goddamn paper planes for 10 fucking times but the most recent one we just kind of speed ran through uh mitsuri's iguro's and sanami's training but the fighting in between, like the comedy in Mitsuri was good. Igoro, I guess there was a little bit of funny funny because the snake and Igoro is also mad because Mitsuri fucking loves us like a little brother. And then Sanami with Genya stuff was a little bit emotional. Sanami and Tanjiro fighting was fucking hilarious. A whole brawl started. He was like, fuck you. And we're like, fuck you too. You stabbed my sister. I thought overall the episode was pretty great. I'd be comfortable putting in a great. I don't think it was the best I've seen. But I'm going to put it in the gray tier for now. Blue Archive. I don't think... I, I think most of you guys have already just kind of forget, forgotten about Blue Archive. I'm not going to put it in mid, but this is where you guys are putting it. Based on the interest, based on the viewership compared to some of the other, other animes. Blue Archive is honestly pretty bottom. Kind of sad to see what's happened to a series that was so beloved in the first couple episodes. But that's what happened with trends. Oh shit. Blue Archive's getting an anime? I'm going to check it out, but those motherfuckers are tourists and they don't actually continue watching every episode after that. Regarding the episode itself, I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was overall pretty fucking fun. It was like a pop-off episode where we're fighting Mr. Kaiser and oh no, what's going to happen? We're going to lose him. Problem Solver 68 shows up with more bombs. It felt like a finale type of episode. It was pretty fun. It was pretty good. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't give a fuck about the show anymore, but hey, it is what it is. Appraisal Isekai. I would be... I think that the episode itself was pretty interesting. Now that ours is getting promoted, we're actually going to talk to the different princes. We finally met the MILF as well. But, I don't know. The dialogue was interesting, but it's not going to be like the most exciting I've ever seen. It's hard to kind of compel an audience with pure dialogue and conversations. I don't think it was boring, but I don't think it was great either. I think it was a pretty good episode. We finally got the MILF. We finally got more plans on who to establish the leadership positions from our side. Things are, you know, boiling, and I'm sure the next couple episodes will be comfortable putting in greater peak. Level 2 cheat. The show that just keeps fucking delivering. I swear to god, this, this anime is gonna be in the peak tier every fucking time. I swear to god. There is something about this anime. <laughs> it's because it doesn't take itself seriously. It's because it's just so funny with the slice of life elements and Demon Lord coming to our place because he can't afford rent no more because he was too good. And now they're joining us and Bali Rosa was like, oh my god, this guy's fucking stalking me. We're going to get married at this point. Bali Rosa was also, you know, got over her, what was it? Her bias, her suspicions. She just felt a little weird around Gozal, but I thought it was a pretty funny episode. I'm going to put it on peak every fucking week, bro. The little brother getting kicked out with the arrow fucking pointing where he's falling down from the castle. Shit like that. And the fake hero got out. The fake hero escaped with his quote-unquote gold digger. And now they're going to come to the village, bring in more miasma. And I'm sure they're going to start some new shit for us to enjoy. But I'll be fine putting in a peak. Windbreaker? It was a good episode. I think that Windbreaker, it was a wrap-up episode. So you cannot really... It's not fair to kind of compare with the other episodes, right? It, it was like a wrap-up episode. There's no fights going on. We're like, all right, we're all friends now. We're all chilling now. You know, it's stuff like that. It's not the most exciting. Every, obviously, everyone wants to see the fights. It's just one of those episodes where they're wrapping shit up. They're ending the season. They got one more episode left. I thought it was a good episode overall. It was kind of funny seeing Umemiya hype up Sakura as like the next number one while the other mad dog guy who's a big simp of Umemiya was on the other side of the table just growling and showing his fangs bro 
got cucked so hard. That's what you get for being a simp. Die, Nana OG. I put that shit at peak. I put this shit in peak. Yep. Mm hmm. BBL Shota is unparalleled, bro. BBL Shota just keeps fucking delivering. The animation quality is unreal. The amount of dedication they put into the animation alone for this anime is amazing. The pacing is great. The comedy is great. The fan service. It's a 10 year old kill with the BBL. What the fuck am I supposed to say about the fan service? But it does hit the emotional tones. It's really fucking hype. It got towards like some Dragon Ball Z levels of fighting. I think Peak Shota. We're gonna put this shit on Peak. Mushoku Tensei! This shit was Peak. Mushoku Tensei, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I put Mushoku Tensei in Peak. It was really nice to just save, you know, Roxy and the Roxy gushing over Rudy scenes. Those, those are really wholesome. Roxy now sees Rudy as a man. Not a child, not a, an apprentice. No, 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 no. She sees him as a man. And Paul's being like, hey, Rudy. Sometimes in life, having one sword just limits you. Why not two swords? Why not three swords? There's a lot of really fun, wholesome moments with Paul. But again, these are death flags. These are death flags being set up. And I think that Father's Day is coming up pretty soon, right? What is it? Next Sunday or something where people sing that's like fucking Father's Day showing up? I'm gonna straight up assume Paul's gonna fucking die on Father's Day. They're fucking setting this shit up so that Paul dies on Father's Day after they've set up so much, you know, interaction between Rudy and Paul, all these missed interactions with father and son. Let's get real. It is uncanny how much dedication they're putting into the relationship between Paul and Rudy. They're making us feel like we're family again so that when that episode happens, a dagger is gonna get stabbed in us and it's gonna be like... Fuck. Fuck. It's happening, bro. It's gonna fucking happen. Remonster. Mmm. Remonster. The most recent episode. Probably somewhere between good and great. It was a pretty hype episode. The fights. I don't really watch this show for fights. I ain't gonna lie, guys. Whenever you have an anime that skips through all the foundations and explaining all the different mechanics and how these, you know, powers came to be. They skirt over it. I have no attachment to the fights. I don't really give a fuck. It's funny to see the other two girls get pregnant and finally give them names, though. That shit's funny. Fucking up Kichi again. That shit's kind of funny. Evolution forms. Those are actually pretty hype. I do like it when people get new forms and stuff like that. I'm comfortable putting this in great. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it in great. I'll put it in great. Elf Pride. I put the shit in peak. I put Elf Bride in peak this week, man. Man, the conclusion with Raphael and Owala for the whole secret of who killed Orobas. It was pretty great. It was pretty good. Chastil is actually getting the forefront of the Angelic Knights and she's going to inherit the title Orobas. And Raphael, we were like, oh no, Raphael's going to die. How could this be? No. Nope. No, oh, he's a butler looking like Hajime, bro. He's got like a metallic arm and everything. Grandpa is a butler at her place. This is great. Our family is expanding. Now, they have, I believe, one more episode. I think a lot of people are saying that this is a good time to kind of stop the anime. But if they have one more, it's probably going to be anime only, fan service, wholesome, cute shit. I'd imagine next episode of finale is going to be really, really adorable. Cute shit happening with Zagan, Nephi, and everyone else. It's going to be a good way to wrap up the season. This anime, honestly, has been fantastic. Straight up. It focused... Why was it good? I think it was great because, like... Well, to me, rom-com, I prefer it when it's more calm than rom. But this was rom-com built in a native isekai world. Not isekai. Native isekai. Fantasy world. Where there's a lot of, you know, battle elements in there. You know, you have the arc demons, you have the knights, you have the conflict. So it's not, you know, boring and you're just in the high school fucking Japanese high school setting. And the moments between Zagan and Nephi, very wholesome, very cute. Valafor, cunny as fuck. And there's a lot of hype shit going on too. So just one of those rom-coms where I, I enjoy. Loser Ranger? This is where you guys are rating this. Based on pure viewership, this is where you guys have decided Loser Ranger should be at. I don't know why, but um, y'all y'all decided that you guys don't give a fuck about Loser Ranger. It sucks to see what's happened to this show. I thought it was pretty hype. 
I thought it was a really entertaining episode, but I think a lot of people that watched this for the first time were compelled by the immediate elements of the Dusters versus like Dragon Keepers. Then after that, the plot is getting very intricate and complex, and they're doing a lot of other shit to the point where we're doing selection exams with other, I guess, recruits. I'm enjoying the plot, but I see a lot of people not give a fuck about this show anymore. I would be comfortable putting this on like a great. Last episode was hype. It was the conclusion of round three. And then the blue keeper fucking showed up out of nowhere. And then now we're fighting him and the, the secret's off, right? Sakurama is not Sakurama. It's D. And now blue keeper knows and we have to fucking close this shit out. How's it going to work? Blue keeper and its juniors backstory as well. Made me kind of empathize with them. I thought it was a great episode, but a lot of people have kind of lost interest in this show. It is what it is. It is what it is. Mission Yozakura. It was a good episode. It was kind of just set up. Honestly, people keep saying every episode that performs bad, people keep saying, bro, trust me next episode. Bro, trust me next arc. First, they said, bro, trust me Kurogawa arc. Then they say, bro, trust me second core. Listen, I'm watching this show. And this show has not delivered on the peak level of greatness that I've been expecting. Y'all are raising the bar, hyping this shit up over and over again. At this point, when we go into core two, you're gonna say, bro, trust me, season two. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. But in terms of my personal enjoyment and what people's enjoyment are by viewership on YouTube, this show is like the bottom, ready to be cut, straight up. Like, <laughs> Sentai and Yozakura, these two, they're ready to be cut from the list because you guys just don't give a fuck about it. And this isn't me saying, I hate the show. It's, it's, it's me saying, I make a video you guys don't watch. It does bad for YouTube algorithm. We need to cut that shit off and move on with different shows people want. Beyblade's got more interest than fucking Yozakura, bro. Y'all are saying, trust me, bro. Trust me, bro. If it takes you an entire fucking season to set up to get to the good shit, I think the anime is trash. Seriously. Straight up, if your favorite series takes you an entire season to preps that a second season is good, I think that shit's fucking trash. An anime needs to be good immediately. I don't give a fuck about, oh, the early game is boring. No, you can make an anime engaging from the first episode even without hype content, right? I think the direction of Yoza Lakota has been lackluster. I think it's been pretty slow. I think it's not been able to capture the hearts of many fans. And all we have left is diehard elitists say, Yoza is pretty so good next season, I promise, bro. I'm waiting. I'm fucking waiting. We're all fucking waiting. Three episode rule? This shit's fucking 11 episode rule, bro. This shit's getting into 12 episode rule at this fucking point. You also couldn't need a fucking entire season for the setup. And then it gets good, apparently. I don't fucking know, bro. Slime peak. Slime peak easy. Yep. Slime peak easy. I love slime. Right now, it's popping the fuck off. We had a conclusion of the... Holy war against us. It wasn't really a war. It was just a fucking misunderstood battle. Uriel was hype. Fucking Raphael saved a backup. And again, what I fucking say, what I tell you fucking neckbeard retards engaging. In, and then the worst thing about the light novel people is how much they kept confirming and confirming. It's like, yeah, Bilzebub is gone. It got sacrificed. Yeah, it got a backup though. That's the whole fucking point I'm trying to say. An implication is not a confirmation. We're trying to wait for a way to something else happen. And then finally they explain what happened. The light novel people, honestly, when I do slime reactions, bro, I fucking hate chat because there's so many sweaty retards that come in and try to spoil. Slime reactions are when the chat is the most like busiest. It gets the most viewership because you have a lot of these fucking autists that show up wanting rec like recognize like rec rec uh like attention. They want to be acknowledged. They have no fucking social lives. They have no fucking thing going good in their lives. All they know is like twenty thousand different slime trivia. They show up to an anime only stream. They spoil everybody and they ruin it for fucking everybody. I fucking hate light novel elitists like that. It just ruins it for fucking everybody. Saying me me me, look at me. I know all. All the shit that's gonna happen in the future. Shut the fuck up. Make your own fucking channel. Make a video on a retard. Ain't nobody want you here. That's why I ignore chat and I just keep fucking just watching the anime during slime reactions, bro. There is something about sweaty isekais like Mushoku Tensei and slime that just like the main audience is just like the most vile, filthy, like disgusting trash that just ruins it for fucking everyone else. I, there's a pattern. There is straight up a pattern of behavior I'm seeing in every fucking slime reaction. Y'all are fucking disgusting. Take a fucking shower and touch some fucking grass. Skimichi Miller Fantasy. Peak. 
Facts. Gimichi Moonly Fantasy. Absolutely fucking peak. Oh my god. Makoto right now is just popping the fuck off. I was kind of complaining in the earlier episodes about how it's taking so much time to set up for Skimichi Moonly Fantasy. But all that setup is now paying the fuck off. Right now, Makoto versus Io, it wasn't even a battle. Bro is just testing his new suit out. Rona, sit the fuck down, bitch. Get the fuck out of here. Sophia, <laughs> L, you got rizzed by Trash Moki. Get the fuck out of my face. We're not fighting. We're disrespecting. We're humiliating. We're straight up roasting everybody. It is amazing. Rona and Io relationship though there's like a funny little thing going on there it looks like rona's really into eo i mean they kind of look like a good couple shiki is also popping off and shiki is he a dragon slayer lancer versus shiki makuto said nah shiki would win next episode's looking really fucking hype too sophia honestly had like five separate different fucking power-ups bro Sophia had like five separate power-ups <laughs> makuto threw her down every fucking time by just standing there Sophia did get a little bit lot stronger, but like, damn, it's just no one is even close to Wakasama. He's not even fucking trying. Peak Skimichi. Konosuba. Hmm. Let's think about Konosuba. <laughs> it's gotta be peak. <laughs> Poor Dust. Dust Bussy. Oh no. The misunderstanding of Dust, bro. I thought we were trying to save my girl. But the novel and can anyone confirm? Could, does anybody know if um the person that noble that dust that guy was that that was like a thirsting over dust for if he was thirsting after Union in the Megamine spinoff? I can't really remember. But there was a creepy motherfucker at the end of Megamine spinoff when Union and Megamine are trying to look for teammates. And there's a guy that's like, oh please, can I have a picture of your toes and shit like that to Union? I thought that guy was the same noble that was kind of being creepy to dust. I'm not really sure. Maybe he's bi. Maybe he doesn't just like fanboys. He likes both of them. But goddamn, the whole misunderstanding with dust was pretty fucking hilarious. And then raiding Darkness's <laughs> mansion and all the guards are just hearing shit like, yeah, Darkness uses these toys to, you know, relieve her stress at night. And I'm like, all the guards are like, what? What do you think? Cosmo voice acting as Darkness is fucking hilarious. I think the MVP really goes to Aqua's buffs, the entertaining entertainer or some shit. There was some kind of buff, right? Where it made Cosmo just do whatever the fuck he wanted. Pretty fucking funny episode. Now, it was a bit sad though at the end. It was very sad at the end with Darkness's dad. He's passing away. We learned that we can't just, you know, resurrect this guy because people who die from natural causes. That's just the natural course of life. You just can't do that. So, rip that. He gave us his blessings to take darkness and run away, but we'll see what's gonna happen with the the political marriages, you know, formed by debt. Newgate! Newgate. Mid? Mid or good? Mid or good? You can't... You, you, you can't just use cat ears to justify going to good tier. I don't think it's, I don't think it's right to compare Newgate to the other three above in good tier. Thank you, Corny, for the tier one sub. I appreciate that, my man. But Newgate overall, we just got cat ears on. Then there was more setup and going back to the kingdom to talk to the princess. And it's looking like the next episode's gonna be pretty hype. But overall, it was just cat girl Tierra Shni, and then me and the princess. That's about it. Newgate is all over the place. Sometimes it can be really, really, really fucking amazing. Sometimes it can be really, really, really fucking mid. It's just... I'll put it in mid tier for now. Misfit of Demon King Academy. Ho, 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 Comedy. Yup. 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 Put it in peak. Put it in peak. Yo. I was actually following with the plot. There was like double incest foursome going on. <laughs> With Anos and Arcana being siblings and Misha and Sacha being siblings. The church guy. The draconoid church guy. We first enter like, uh, I want to join your church. I want to join your religion. We joined and then he basically then started worshipping us after we he saw whatever the fuck we did, right? There is a new girl. What was her name? Was her name Nasha? I forget. There's a new girl that's been... Very insecure about her powers. Naya, that's the one, to Erdomade. And Nerdomade was like, nah, girl, don't worry. Your bowl 
even if you don't have that much mana or something, your vessel is big and high quality and you can take all my Pokemons. In fact, why don't you make a contract? So, Erdo made the Order of fucking... What was his name? The Holy uh, Holy Father. Uh, now, Naya has control over that shit. Naya could technically make Erdo made like uh, the Heavenly Father fighting against Sanos. I don't think that's gonna happen. I think that Naya has now become like a fucking invincible Pokemon master and it's OP. There is the cheering squad that was like learning new songs as well. That's kind of getting hinted. And then who shows up at the end? The only fucking antagonist this season. <laughs> Motherfucking Ahide shows up. Does some bullshit again. How the fuck are we getting this motherfucker Ahide show up again? Doing some bullshit. This dude... Can we get a new antagonist, please? We're gonna fucking wipe his ass. I don't think anybody is actually afraid of Ahide right now. It's just bizarre what we're doing with him. But you wanna get fucking clapped again? Be my fucking guest. Next episode. Date alive. Mmm. It's gonna be between great and peak. Did I enjoy Date Alive more than Demon Slayer, uh, Blue Archive, Remonster, and Sentai? I did. I did. It was dating her fucking mom's clone. I put it in peak. I put it in peak. I mean, the last episode of Data Live was way better, but like the most recent was just like also pretty damn good to the point there may need to exist a tier right in between peak and grade. I don't know. I don't think it was like the best episode of Data Live, but it all it, it hit all the original tones, right? What ha what is Data Live in a nutshell? We fucking do our fucking dumb dating ass simulations. Motherfuckers in the boat says, Oh, option one, two, three. Option one is like, ask her nicely. Option two is like, compliment her dress. Option three, what color is your panties? We went back to the OG themes of Data Live. We're dating our fucking mom's clone. <laughs> Rene, and there's more setup happening with West God and how they're gonna counter us. It was a pretty good mm, intermission, kind of like a little bit break from gas to the fucking pedal. You know, we're just going go, go, go. Every girl's just getting fucking killed left, right, and center. But now we're back, and now we're dating her fucking mom's clone. And Rene, I don't know <laughs> how we're gonna wrap up the date. Are we gonna kiss Rene? What's gonna happen? Because, like, if the idea is to riz up Rene so that by the time Rene goes back to Mio and combines, Mio will then be like, you know what? Maybe we can all exist together. But Mio is still within Kurumi, and Kurumi might just end up still dying. There was still that paradox at place. So it's gonna be interesting to see what's gonna happen with that. But we went back to the OG Data Live episodes. I fucking enjoyed it, man. Now, Kai Ju. Eight. Yeah, I'll put it in peak. I'll put it in peak. Every fucking episode, bro. It's just like, there's no downtime. There's a little bit of downtime for five minutes, and it's like, enemies are attacking! New fucking monsters! Oh my fucking god, bro. Raise it? I can't raise it anymore beyond peak, bro. This is all peak. This, this is all peak, bro. There is no order. This doesn't mean that Kaiju, that level 2 is better in Kaiju. There is there is no order in this tier list, but Kaiju 8, bro, this shit, holy fuck. Every episode is just go, 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 go. There's this new red Kaiju, and he's like sentient as well, but he has like a warrior spirit to the point he's calling Hoshinel like a rival. And I'm like, yo, I could kind of root for a villain like this. And he did, you know, have a really sick fight with Hoshinel. Hoshinel. Amazing. He specializes in small to mid-sized uh, kaijus, right? And we get to see more of his sword techniques. Fucking amazing. Now, I think he's a little bit out of his uh, match right now because he's going into space too and he's becoming a big blob. Mina is not here and we need somebody that can take down a big foe. Who is that? It's our boomer main character, Gafka. He's gonna come in out of nowhere. Fucking one punch this shit. Rain of blood comes down. And Kikuru is gonna be like, Oh my god, you're like my stepdad. Man, Kikuru was also sick too. Kikuru with the new weapon, bypassing, like, like skipping the restrictions of um, what it means to get a weapon like that. You need to be like a vice captain or captain to get a special weapon. But Mina was like, straight up. I think that after me and Hoshina, you are number three here in our division. Take the fucking weapon, girl. Or like, bet. Shit was fucking hype. Let's do a final revision of the animes this week. Level two cheap. Fucking funny as all hell. 
Seven Shota, BBL Shota keeps delivering the fight with Guzarme is fucking hype. Mushoku Tensei, funniest fuck moments with dad. Daddy so cool, Roxy gushing, but that's probably gonna die soon, right? Deep dad's probably gonna die soon, right? Elf Bride, cunny as fuck. Raphael coming back as Butler. I love the resolution. Tensura, peak, 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 but oh boy, we're going into meetings. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready for the fucking meetings, bro? Skimish Moonlit Fantasy popping the fuck off every episode. Hype, hype, hype. Battle, battle, battle. Next episode, Lancer versus Shiki. I hope Shiki takes him out. I hope that Makoto comes out and does something crazy. Konosuba, rest in peace, Dust Bussy. <laughs> Mao, fucking. <laughs> Erdom is honestly hard carrying. Anos, you know, the dumbass fucking jokes. <laughs> the double incest force. <laughs> Date alive, dating her mother. Need I say less? Kaijuei, Kaijuei is just again, there's every episode, there's no fucking break. It's just go, go, go. Demon Slayer, I hope it continues to do well. But, I mean, we have what? We're on episode 5 of Demon Slayer right now, right? We're on uh, episode 5 of Demon Slayer. So we have 6, 7, 8 left. Aren't people going to finish it? Like, like, like we should be getting into that really hype shit now. Like, I heard that the movie, the 40 minute movie was only good for the intro and the ending shit. I'm sure they're saving the ending shit. Next episode with Gyome training, I expect it to be pretty good. Blue Archive, it was a cool fight. Unfortunately, people don't really give a fuck about it anymore. Remonster, and honestly, it should probably be in good, but relative to the other episodes, it was, it's been all right. Sentai, again, same, same thing with Blue Archive where it's just like, Hype episodes, but people lost interest overall. These three all together were just kind of either wrap up or, you know, set up episodes. Newgate. I'm sorry. You, you can't just slap on cat ears and say that it was a good episode. They're setting some shit up. But I think that I can say that this is my order of preference of entertainment. My personal enjoyment for week 10 of spring 2024 anime. And if you want to fucking cry about it, you want to fucking say, Oh, you put my here, shut the fuck up, pussy. Make your own fucking tier list of your own entertainment. Then I'll come and hate on your fucking video and you'll realize how fucking annoying you are.